building a new computer or just upgrading your old one, chances are you are going to need some data storage. We are going to review the three major technology available to us today. The hard disk drive, the solid state drive and the M.2 solid state drive. And now in acronyms, HDD, SDD, no, S, uh, dot, uh, 2 M dot SSD. Uh. As you may already have noticed, today we are not really reviewing three different components, but rather the three step evolution of one your hard disk drive. Say what? On one hand of that evolution, we have a 50 year old technology who's been around. Well, for 50 years. And even today, it has its advantages. On the other hand, exciting, exciting, exciting new devices. But in certain cases, with severe practical drawbacks. All right, let's start with hard disk drives. They store data through a technology called magnetic storage. That is the very same technology that's been used for audio tapes, video tapes, and data tapes. Its principle is robustly simple. Get a magnetized platform and divide it in billions and billions of tiny sectors. And using some kind of magnetized head, change the polarity. A positively charged sector represents a binary one. A negatively charged sector does represent a binary zero. Reproduce this operation a billion times and here you got yourself an inexpensive data storage. Now, if you were to open a hard disk drive, oh, so shiny. First, you'd see a bunch of spinning magnetized disks where the sectors organized in clusters store the data in. The faster the disk turns and the faster the magnetized head can have access to the sectors. So for example, if you have a hard disk which operates at 10,000 RPM, you'll have a greater bandwidth and a higher data rate than a hard disk which operates at 5,000 RPM. And we really got good at miniaturizing those clusters of sectors, meaning we can put many more of them on the same disk space. And that translates in more megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes for the very same production cost. And this is the cheapest way to store data today. This is awesome. Uh, well, not really. They are drawbacks. Because hard disks are made of moving parts, they can be fragile and usually not very durable. Furthermore, its bandwidth will always be limited by its physical components. The best you can hope for on any given hard disk drive is anywhere between 100 to 250 megabytes per second. And all was fine, all was fine until the year 2009. Now, what happened in 2009? In 2000 and what happened? Right there, it's right, right! SATA 3.0 happened! Ah, knowledge! Okay, so the SATA 3.0 standard was a major development, enabling our motherboards to intake massive amount of data at a crazy rate, 6 gigabit per second, three times the data rate of the very best mechanical hard drives out there. Yeah, not a good day to be a mechanical hard drive. It therefore became a bottleneck, an obstacle to new performances. The whole industry realized that its days were numbered, or so they thought. And they soon came up with a potential replacement, the solid state drive. Solid state drives are nothing more than silicon chips soldered on an integrated circuit. How reductive. Well, there's more. The memory chips that we're using in solid state drives are not just your regular memory chips. The NAND type memory chip. I know, more acronyms. The NAND type memory chip actually stabilizes the data it contains. What does it mean? Unlike your computer's RAM memory, which loses all its data every time you turn your computer off, NAND memory chips retain your data over long periods of time with or without power. <laughs> Unlike its hard disk drive predecessors, solid state drive do not have moving mechanical parts in it. It makes it uniquely durable and solid. And it doesn't stop there. They stack up unique qualities. They are lighter, smaller, more durable, consume less energy. You can easily transfer it from your desktop computer to your laptop computer. 
And finally, their unique bandwidth abilities let them take full advantage of the SATA 3.0 standard and even in some cases surpasses it. Any backdrops you ask? Well, yes, one, the price. Even though they really got cheaper since last year, they're still very, very expensive compared to the hard disk drive. It will cost you 10 times more to buy a gigabyte on a solid state drive compared to buying a gigabyte on a hard disk drive. And the larger you want your solid state drive, the more expensive the gigabyte costs. Now, because our SATA 3.0 standard is outperformed by our solid state drive, it has now become the bottleneck. And what does do the computer industry when it sees a bottleneck? It makes up more expensive acronyms. The M.2 SSD. The M.2 solid state drive is the ultimate answer from computer industry to bottlenecks. There is nothing left to bottleneck. No more casing, no more cabling, no more nothing. Just like RAM sticks before it, it connects directly into the motherboard. As a direct result, Bandwidth levels are completely unleashed. They are crazy, insane. In certain cases, the bandwidth exceeds 35 gigabits per second. I mean, this thing is ridiculous. 18 mm long, 2 mm wide, and it is lighter than, than very light things. There is not even a casing to it. I mean, ah, this is ridiculous. No, 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 no. no. I hope I didn't break it. I mean, that's expensive. Uh, anyway. More seriously, this thing is absolutely great. I love it. I used it. I tested it. It's absolutely amazing in every sense of the word. But there are some drawbacks to it. To my taste and for general users, I find it a little geeky. A bit too prototypey. There are large gaps for improvement. Large. First, the price. If you thought that solid state drives were expensive, well, think again. A gigabyte on that thing will cost you 50% more than on solid state drives, meaning that a gigabyte on this thing costs 15 to 20 times more than on a mechanical hard disk drive. And you'll remember at the beginning of the video, I was referring to severe practical drawbacks. Well, not every motherboard has an M.2 connector. And when they do have one, well, they have one. So basically upgrades are difficult. You have to go well into the guts of your computer to put in and remove an M.2 SSD drive. Also, motherboards usually don't recognize M.2 solid state drive as bootable devices. So you have to go around your BIOS and tweak things for it to work. And that's not very comfortable or user friendly. Lucky you, I have another tutorial video addressing this very issue. So yes, not very budget friendly and not for the everyday computer user. Verdict. Hard disk drives are cheap and they can store a lot of data. On the other hand, they are slow and fragile. Solid state drives are awesome, but they are limited by the SATA 3.0 cabling standard. And finally, the M.2 solid state drive. Well, even though it is the best performing data storage out there and saves us a ton of space in our build, it seems to me that they are still stuck at their prototyping stage, kinda. I really don't think that the M.2 SSD is mature enough or a necessity right now, and I think it's too expensive still. At the end of the day, what I would advise is to use a little bit of both technologies. I'd install two storage devices. On one hand, I'd go for a solid state drive to boot my computer and install my most demanding softwares. And on the other hand, to store my larger files, I'd go for a mechanical hard drive. In this kind of configuration, your computer should be able to give you both affordable performances and large data storage. So, so nail that one. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. So, dear YouTube users, you know what to do. If you like my video, like it. If you didn't like my video, like it anyways! Leave dangerously! Both cases, make sure to subscribe to my little channel and if you have any questions or comments, make sure to make good use of the comment section down there and stay tuned for my next edition.